Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everybody. Thanks for joining in again today. Remember, life's too short to drive boring cars, and that's why we're gonna talk about the new McLaren 720S today and how, in fact, it is so underrated. In other words, it's so much better than critics and others give it credit for. It's the Lamborghinis, it's the Ferraris, it's all that other stuff gets the fame. But push come to shove, as a performance machine, you better believe the McLaren 720S is arguably one of the best supercars out there today. Let's get into some of the details now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Play. So the new McLaren 720S is replacing the 650, which came before it. And the 650 utilized the M8 38T engine, and now the new McLaren 720S utilizes the new M840 T engine which happens to be about 50% redesigned over the previous engine. Now McLaren's always traditionally been known for naming their cars based on the rough horsepower range. For example, the 650S was roughly just under 650 flywheel horsepower. And now everybody's wondering why is the 720S so much faster than, than some of its competition with similar horsepower numbers? As a matter of fact, they call it the 720S, but there's been many proven tests that show that the new 720 actually has closer to 700 horsepower to the wheels, which would put it closer to the 770, 780 horsepower based on driveline loss to the engine. Now that is superb numbers. And as a result, these cars perform more like a hypercar than they do like a supercar. It really does move it into the new echelon. So let's get into some of the details on the engine, chassis, and suspension that make this new revised 720S such a great car and so overlooked. So the new 720S actually uses a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 engine, which some believe is actually a bored-out engine, but it's not. It's actually stroked. It's more of a stroker version of the 3.8 that came in the 650. So yes, it does create the higher revving nature, and therefore the power band tends to move up in the range. Now along with the stroker design, about 50% of the new engine has been revised, updated, or replaced over the previous 3.8 liter. This new engine is superb. And here's some performance numbers. How about zero to 60 miles per hour, 2.9 seconds. Quarter mile in about 10.2 seconds and a top speed of a whopping 212 miles per hour puts this car in a true hypercar territory. It is spectacularly fast and when you see it put time and time again, for example on videos by Drag Times, he proves it over and over again. He goes against some big performers and pulls out ahead almost 9 times out of 10 with his bone stock 720S. It is truly that good. Now what else has changed? Well the chassis is a great design. It is also a carbon monocoque design evolved from the previous generation that you found in the 650. And the 720's monocoque design is lighter, stiffer, and even more so it's been opened up along the top edges to allow better access into the car, makes it easier for entry and egress for passengers. Come on in. As well, you know the carbon fiber monocoque chassis are actually far more exotic than what you find in a lot of other supercars, which happen to utilize aluminum space frame technology. This is real down to earth, nitty gritty hypercar level performance. Well, you want to know hypercar performance, so let's talk about some of the design elements on the exterior of the car. Now, if you look at the front end, that very skeletal looking front end assembly that you see with the headlights, there are actually vents in there too that lead into some cooling radiators to help cool the engine. Now you move around to the side and you look at all those areas where air is designed to flow in and around and as a result this car has way less drag than the previous 650 that it replaced. Now moving around, we also see the wheels, great new ultralight aluminum forged rims. And then if you look at the back, focus on the back end of this car. It uses a fine strip of LED taillights, very similar to the McLaren P1 hypercar that costs you over $2 million. That's right, the whole back end is heavily gauged around the P1. Just look at the form around the engine and the taillights and the fin that rises up and down, it is almost identical to the P1 that cost you a fortune. Not only that, it's been proven by Chris Harris, who ran a P1 around a track 
then followed the same track with a 720S and came within fractions of a second. This 720 is truly as good and as fast in a track as the P1, which is the hypercar with equivalent to 900 horsepower, and they did it with 720 horsepower in the 720S. Now the suspension is hydraulic, very similar to the one found in the 650, although they utilized much lighter components, shed a pile of weight, and it just operates on hydraulics essentially, offering more stability and is constantly changing, changing dynamically to allow for their changing road condition. Now moving to the inside of the car, it is a beautiful place. Lots of Alcantara, not so much in the leather department as you found in many of the 650s before it. Now they're moving into the lighter weight synthetic products. Again, as I say, still Alcantara. If you look at the dashboard, it has a two-stage part. The whole pod will either come up and rise and give you the full display if you go into the standard modes. If you select the race mode, then it drops down and gives you the horizontal narrow section, which just gives you the bare essentials. Speed, engine RPM, and the basics is all you need for performance track racing. Then you look around the rest of the interior, high quality, everything is designed, form follows function. It is truly a place for racing. With over 700 horsepower, there's no question this thing is really one of the fastest supercars out on the market today. The materials are simple but high quality, and the car really does give you a sense of hypercar territory. It is a wonderful place to be. So why is this car so underrated when you compare it to cars, for example, like an Aventador, or even a Performante Lamborghini Huracan, or even a 488? It is faster than any of those cars. So why is it not more popular? Well, for the simple fact that it's not badged and McLaren is still a racing company, still early in its life. They're starting to build out, create a lot more models for the next two, three years to get it more out there and to push the name brand a little bit more and improve on the branding. But essentially, this is truly car among supercars. If you want to go fast, this is the car you will do it in. It will dominate over anything Italian at this point in time and truly does it with little muss, little fuss. Just be aware, of course, the typical British niggles with some electronics, get around that and this car is spectacularly great. So as always, I know you love the video, click the subscribe button down there and if you wanna see one more quick one, over here there's a link to my 650S preview that I did a couple weeks ago. Hope to see you guys soon, see you then, bye bye. Heat